Howdy, it's Kyle talking about the places in the U.S. that were the top destinations for various nationalities and ethnic groups to emigrate to. For example, for German immigrants, Wisconsin is the state with the highest percentage of the population that is of German ancestry, but there are many other groups that came over in smaller numbers that are often associated with a neighborhood within a city. And I'm going to go over many different nationalities and ethnicities, and I'll put them in alphabetical order if you want to search through them like that. But whether it's Little Tokyo or Little Buenos Aires or all the Little Italys in between, let's take a look at where some of these immigrant groups emigrated to in the U.S., I can't go over all of the nationalities and ethnicities that have emigrated to the U.S., but I do want to cover some of the largest groups, starting with Afghanistan. Most of the people from Afghanistan living in the U.S. came over as a refugee due to war-torn conditions, and the number one destination to go to has been Sacramento, California. For immigrants from Albania in southeastern Europe, the number one destination was Bronx in New York City, especially in the Belmont neighborhood, although there aren't huge numbers of Albanian immigrants in the U.S. There have been many Arab immigrants come to the U.S., and the city with the largest concentration of Arabs is the Detroit suburb of Dearborn. And Detroit is the number one metro in the U.S. for Arab and other Muslim country immigrants. For Argentina, most of the immigrants came to either Florida or California, and the largest concentration is in Miami, and this is where you have the part of town called Little Buenos Aires. For Armenian immigrants, the number one destination was the L.A. metro area, especially the city of Glendale, as well as the part of town called Little Armenia, which is in East Hollywood. For immigrants from Bangladesh, the number one spot to go to has been Queens in New York, especially the Jamaican neighborhood. Parts of it are referred to as Little Bangladesh. Many Bosnians came to the U.S. as refugees in the 90s due to war-torn conditions in Yugoslavia, and the number one location for people to come to was Chicago. However, the city where you'll find the part of town called Little Bosnia is in St. Louis. For Brazil, the largest concentration of immigrants is in Middlesex County, Massachusetts, which is Boston suburbs. There are a larger number of Brazilians in Florida, but they're much more spread out to the state. The Central African nation of Cameroon has a decent number of immigrants in the U.S., primarily in Prince George's and Montgomery Counties, Maryland, and the D.C. suburbs. There have been many Chinese immigrants come to the U.S. for over a hundred years. The largest number of them came to Los Angeles, especially in the area that is Chinatown, but also the San Gabriel Valley. Although from a percentage of the population standpoint, it's higher in the San Francisco Bay Area. Like many other immigrants from South America, Colombians largely went to Florida, especially Miami. But there are large numbers of Colombians all throughout South Florida in general. There were a large number of Croatians that came to the U.S. as immigrants or as refugees in the 90s due to the war in Yugoslavia, and there were almost equal numbers that went to Chicago and Queens in New York. For Cuba, the largest number of immigrants and refugees is in Miami and South Florida in general, but there's also a surprisingly large Cuban community in Louisville, Kentucky. For Czechia and Slovakia, it's a little bit different because most of the immigrants came over when it was still Czechoslovakia, one country. But the best data I could find is that the largest number of them came to Chicago, especially in the Pilsen neighborhood. Although how many of those are Czech versus Slovak, I don't know for sure. There haven't been large numbers of Danish people emigrate to the U.S., but the largest numbers of them went to Utah as part of the Mormon settlements. Immigrants from the Dominican Republic and the Caribbean have largely gone to the Bronx or other parts of New York City metro. And the part of Manhattan called Spanish Harlem is where you had a large number of Dominicans as well. El Salvador is one of several Central American countries that have seen a lot of immigrants come to the U.S. recently, most notably in Los Angeles, especially in the Pico Union area just west of downtown. English ancestry is incredibly widespread throughout the U.S., but Utah is the state with the highest percentage that has English ancestry at 24%. Eritrea is an East African country that has seen many immigrants and refugees come over, with the largest numbers being in Seattle. Eritrea's neighbor to the south, Ethiopia, has also seen many immigrants and refugees come to the U.S., most notably in Montgomery County, Maryland, which is suburbs for D.C. For Finnish immigrants, the number one areas were the Michigan UP, northern Wisconsin, and the Triangle of northeastern Minnesota. For those Finns, it had to feel quite at home to be somewhere that gets that cold in the winter with all that fresh water around. For France, of course, Quebec in Canada has the largest percentage that has French ancestry, but in the U.S., the state with the highest French ancestry is Maine. But where you find the largest concentration of people that speak French at home is in St. Martin Parish, west of New Orleans. Much like the English, German immigrants were well distributed throughout the U.S., but Wisconsin is the state with the highest percentage that has German ancestry. 38% of people from Wisconsin claim German ancestry. 
Ghana is a West African nation that has seen a decent number of immigrants come to the U.S., and the largest spot for them to go to is in the South Bronx. There surprisingly haven't been large numbers of Greek immigrants come to the U.S., but where you have the largest percentage of the population that is Greek is the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida. Approximately 9% of the population there speaks Greek at home. There have been many immigrants come from Guatemala as well, most notably in the Los Angeles metro area, primarily in the Westlake neighborhood. There have been large numbers of immigrants and refugees from Haiti come to primarily South Florida, and the number one county is Broward County, which is Fort Lauderdale. The Hmong are an ethnic group in Southeast Asia that are not associated with any single country. Most are from Vietnam, and many came over as refugees after the Vietnam War, largely to the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. Honduras is a very poor Central American country where many refugees have been coming from recently and many more are trying to come here. The number one destination is Houston, Texas. There haven't been a large number of Hungarian immigrants come to the U.S., but the largest concentration of where they came to was Cleveland, Ohio, primarily in the Buckeye neighborhood, sometimes referred to as Little Budapest. With such a huge population in India, it's no surprise that many Indians have emigrated here, and the number one destination has been San Jose and the Silicon Valley area of the San Francisco Bay Area. Because of the so many ongoing wars and conflicts, many refugees and immigrants from Iraq have been coming to the U.S. as well, most notably in Macomb County, which is northern suburbs of Detroit. Irish is one of the largest ancestries in the U.S., and where you find the highest concentration of Irish is in Massachusetts, especially in Boston. There are many neighborhoods in the U.S. referred to as Little Italy, but where you have the largest number of Italian immigrants and the largest percentage of the population that is of Italian ancestry is in Manhattan, and New York's Little Italy is the largest one in the U.S. Immigrants from Japan have largely come to two parts of the U.S. and the Los Angeles metro area around Little Tokyo and the suburb of Gardena, but more recently a large number of Japanese immigrants have been coming to Honolulu. Although there is a relatively large Jewish population in the U.S., most cities just have a small Jewish community, and only the New York City metro area has a large concentration of people who are Jewish, primarily in Brooklyn and Nassau County, which is the county just east of Brooklyn on Long Island. There has been modest immigration from Kenya in the U.S., and there have been a decent number of refugees from the part of the country near the Somalian border, and the largest number of people from Kenya have emigrated to the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. Korean immigrants, the vast majority of whom are from South Korea, have largest concentrations in Southern California, especially in the part of L.A. called Koreatown, south of Hollywood, west of downtown, and also the Orange County city of Fullerton. As a result of the war in Iraq and just facing general persecution in the region, many Kurdish people emigrated to the U.S. as refugees, most notably to Nashville, Tennessee. Laotian immigrants and refugees, which includes Hmong who were coming from the country of Laos, have largely settled in the Twin Cities area of Minnesota, especially St. Paul. Much like many Muslim immigrants from other countries, those from Lebanon often settled in the Detroit metro area, and there are many Lebanese in the city of Hamtramck. Like many other immigrants from Eastern Europe, Lithuanians largely went to Chicago, and to this day you have the largest percentage of the population who have Lithuanian ancestry in Chicago and the suburbs. Although there have been a decent number of immigrants come from the Netherlands, they haven't been very well concentrated, so the largest concentration of people with Dutch ancestry is northwestern Iowa, north of Sioux City. Nicaragua is another Central American country where a lot of immigrants have been coming from, most notably to the Miami area. So it's interesting that for Central Americans, Guatemalans and Salvadorans largely went to L.A., Hondurans largely went to Houston, and Nicaraguans largely went to Miami. For most countries, the immigrants coming to the U.S. are poor, seeking a better life, but for Nigeria, the majority of the immigrants are highly educated and skilled professionals. And the number one location that Nigerian immigrants are coming to is Houston, so corruption in Nigeria is causing the country to lose some of its best people. Norwegians are another group that came from Northern Europe and settled in Minnesota, and Minnesota is where you have the largest number of Norwegians settled there. However, North Dakota is the state with the highest percentage of the population being of Norwegian ancestry. Filipinos are one of the largest immigrant groups in the U.S., and they're well spread out through the country, but where you find the largest percentage that have Filipino ancestry is in the L.A. suburb of Carson. Immigrants from Poland, like many others from Eastern Europe, chose Chicago as their place to reside, and the north and northwestern portions of Chicago, where you still have large percentages of the population who are of Polish ancestry. 
There have been many Portuguese immigrants come to the U.S., and where the largest number of them came to is the areas between Boston and Providence, Rhode Island, especially Bristol County, Massachusetts. There have not been huge numbers of Russian immigrants in the U.S., and they're largely spread throughout the country, but where you have the largest concentration of people with Russian ancestry is Brooklyn. Scottish is another ancestry that is very common all throughout the U.S., but where you find the largest percentage of the population with Scottish ancestry is northern New England, specifically Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. Sikhs are a unique ethnic group that live primarily in India, so their numbers have been added to the Indian immigrant population, but specifically to just Sikhs, the largest percentage of them came to Sacramento and Fresno, California. Somalia is another war-torn country, and many refugees have been coming to the U.S., primarily to the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, and you may have noticed that many of these refugee groups come to the Twin Cities, and I think it's because there are many aid groups that are centered there that specialize in bringing in refugees, so that's why you see so many refugee groups in that area, including Somalians. Just like their Norwegian neighbors, Swedish immigrants largely came to Minnesota, and to this day, that is where you find the largest number of people with Swedish ancestry. Like most other East and Southeast Asian groups, the largest number of people from Thailand have settled in the Los Angeles metro area, especially in the part of East Hollywood known as Thai Town. There have been a modest number of immigrants from Uganda and Central Africa, and the largest number of them went to Middlesex County, Massachusetts, which is in the suburbs of Boston. There are several places in the U.S. that have a Ukrainian village, the largest of which is in Brooklyn, but by far, the largest number of Ukrainian immigrants went to Canada, especially in the provinces of Saskatchewan and Manitoba. Vietnam, another Southeast Asian country with a large number of immigrants in the U.S., have the largest number of people from there living in Orange County, California, especially in the city of Westminster. Many immigrants and refugees from war-torn Yemen, like many other Muslim immigrants and people from other Muslim countries, have come to the Detroit metro area. So that's the list of different nationality and ethnic groups I wanted to discuss in this video. And of course, there are many other groups that have emigrated to the U.S., but I certainly can't discuss them all. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerdy perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support, especially the Boss King himself. If you're interested in purchasing a pin for the viewer pin map or just to support the channel, check out my Patreon page, link in the description, and as always, thank you very much.